Hi, I'm Tiff. This is Tiff Reads Books. I decided to do the booktube newbie tag um, just to kick this off um, as a I want to be part of the community. Um, so let's participate in community activities. Um, and this will be the first video you'll see on this channel. You may have seen my face before, maybe. Um, I have another channel that has some videos on it. Uh, there's only like 13 subscribers and <laughs> I decided let's start a focus channel. My last channel was not focused except for the last like five months it's been a little focused, but uh, it's a mess. So we're just gonna start fresh, wipe the slate clean. So that answers the why did I start this channel? half of it. The other half of it is I need someone to talk about books with. My boyfriend, he's very sweet and very kind and he listens to me and he asks questions, but he can't really engage otherwise. Though we are going to start reading something together next year, so I'm really excited for that. Um, so what fun and unique things... So that's the first question, right? So the second one is what fun and unique things can I bring to YouTube? I, I don't know. Okay, so I can say I'm an evolutionary biologist. Um, so I tend to talk about those types of things. If you watch my vlogs, I will show you clips of like areas where we're doing work on salmon. Um, like you'll see little bits and pieces of, of my life in some of my vlogs without me being, uh, giving away too much information that, um, I'm not supposed to share or, you know, things that are not necessarily <laughs> fun for other people to see. Fisheries biology is not a glamorous job and I am often covered in fish fluids so those are not things that you really want to see on the internet unless you're like me and you're morbidly curious um so that's um what am i excited for i'm excited to have someone talk to about books i'm excited to share the things that i've read and see if other people have read them and um just get more people who find more people who like the things that i like um and that want to talk about them because that would be wonderful so the next question is why do you love reading I just have always loved reading. Um, it took me a while to get back into it though, being in academia for a long time and reading non-fiction, de super dense research papers and stuff, it just <sighs> it gets a little taxing. And so when I started getting back into it, it was just so nice to read something that was like different than my life. Um, so I, I just, I, I like to the quiet and the calm of reading and the being able to just like sit down and become completely absorbed in something. That goes on to what series got you into reading. And okay, so I've joked about how I keep seeing on, on Instagram that a lot of people are like, oh, there's like the, a reel that's going around. It's like, what, what got you into reading? And, or what's the book that got you into reading? And everyone shows pretty much the same books all the time. And I'm like, it's so great to see people that got into books as an adult and they're showing these like adult books, books that are recent releases and I'm so excited to see people that are just now finding a love for literature and that's amazing. But I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you some of mine because I found them at a thrift store this year so give me a second. Okay, so I've not taken the tags off these yet so you can see I picked them up for a dollar. Um, this is Margaret Henry and she wrote books about horses. <laughs> because I was a horse girl. I grew up with horses. And so I don't have the one that actually made me really love it, which was King of the Wind. It's on the back of one of these. And I loved that one so much um, because it's of the same breed of horses that I grew up with. Um, but I loved Justin Morgan Had a Horse, which is the origin story of the Morgan horse. Um, Bridie of the Grand Canyon, which I love donkeys and mules so freaking much. And then Misty of Shingo Teague. I even have the briars of this um, still, though the foal, um, her leg got broken <laughs> the, a long time ago because they were so thin. So these were some of the things that got me into, book, into reading as a kid. Um, uh, these, the Saddle Club and the Thoroughbred series. <laughs> so up until I was like probably 13, I read these a lot or 12, 12, because then in seventh grade, I had to start reading other things. But I'll show you what got me into reading in high school, because I have that one too. Okay, so when I was 14, I, it, in 12 and 13, I kind of did this range of things. I read some Mary Higgins Clark, I read some nonfiction, I read a lot of baseball memoirs and biographies. 
<laughs> um, and I read like some stuff about like the evolution of horseshoes and like where they came from. I remember reading that and I can't remember if that was like, a, I think it was a horse historical fiction about King Arthur's farrier. Like <laughs> I read some weird stuff. Um, <laughs> and I don't remember much of it. I can't remember even what Mary Higgins Clark books I read. Um, and then I read like some John Grisham and was really bored. <laughs> And then when I turned, because I wanted to be a lawyer, and so I read some John Grisham books. And then when I hit high school, I decided I was strolling through the library and I came across this book, Bag of Bones, and it said on the back that it was a haunted love story. And I'd been reading Mary Higgins Clark, so I was like, hell yeah, give me the ghosts. <laughs> so I read this book when I was 14, and there's a lot in here when I was doing my reread last year that I was like, damn. I don't know if I should have read that as a, thir as a 14 year old. I forgot there is a really brutal, brutal essay scene in this book and wiped it from my memory. Um, yeah, so this got me hooked on Stephen King. And since from then I picked up like every week or two, a new Stephen King book and the bigger and thicker, the better. <laughs> Phrasing. So that's what got me into reading. This year, what really got me into reading was just like, cause this year my reading has really picked up. I start I planned a 23 and 23 last year in near the end I watched a bunch of YouTube videos on people's favorites of the year their most expect like their most hyped books that they wanted to come out and I picked books based on YouTubers that whose like interests seem to ally with mine on like other types of books that I had read like oh I was like oh I've read that one or oh that actually sounds really interesting and they're giving it a good review or oh that doesn't sound interesting to me and they're giving it a good review so I probably won't like what they like type of thing and so I made this like <laughs> list of one books that I had bought and then sat on my shelf and two um books that other people were hyped about that were kind of in line with that and so I picked 23 books that would broaden my horizons I put three Stephen Kings on there one that I had purchased already and one new release maybe it was two Stephen Kings and one new release and because I knew I would like those and then I just kind of branched out and branched out and I ended up just I think it was once I read Our Wives Under the Sea, I just started devouring books. And because that's what made me realize that I like books. Between that and rereading my Stephen King books this year, I started a reread project with Audible. Um, and I realized I love books that are character driven. I don't care if there's not a lot of plot. I like to sit there and marinate with a character and like get in their head and spend time in their life and just uh, you can give me a here's my characters aren't they cute story and I'll be like hell yeah I love your characters they're so cute like honestly I realized I like that so when I read Our Wives Under the Sea which was very very vibes and very much like mood and character driven and I was just like obsessed with it also I have like this big fear of deep water and the things that might be in it hi fisheries biologist who's afraid of water um so <laughs> I, that was just like it was so good and I realized I really like sapphic books too so I've started like just kind of picking up things and just devouring books this year so I have kind of three phases in my life I guess where different things have inspired different uh, reading stages um okay so questions to ask other booktubers honestly I don't know I tend to watch the videos where people answer these questions and I'm like oh that's a really good question I struggle to come up with questions to ask people about their job or like you know it, help with things it's just it's something I've always struggled with I can I used to go to a lot of conferences and listen to people in my field talk about their work and I could sit there and listen and be like oh my god your work is so amazing and really all I want to do is like everything you did is so good I'm so proud of you can you be my friend like honestly I and then it's like three or four days later I'm like oh I should have asked that question so I'll, me and asking questions I really struggle but if someone else asks a question I can usually follow up on that and stuff so honestly I just love it when youtubers do the uh, Q&A things or when they just show like you know bits and pieces of their process because I'm like oh, I would have never thought to ask that but that's such a good thing to know anyway that's that's my answer for that one <laughs> the next one is um, what do you think the challenges of a book to of book will be well considering that I've been doing this for a few months the challenge for me is getting people to watch my stuff um, because like when I look at my reach, I get put out to 10, 10 people 
and three of them watch the video and that's like the extent of my reach so <laughs> for like the first like two weeks and then it'll get pushed a little bit more um so i'm hoping that starting fresh with a clean blank slate will allow the youtube algorithm to figure out where to put me because i realized it was putting me in really weird things um i don't want to mention them because i don't want it to happen but it was things that were completely unrelated to anything i talked about any like book stuff it was just really weird weird things so i'm hoping <laughs> that that challenge can be mitigated the other challenge is just me sticking to things um i have eclectic interest i tend to bounce around but i've been pretty good for the last five months or so um about actually doing this and kind of trying to pick up a rhythm and find the time to do this and um i think my biggest thing that has been a challenge and continues to be a challenge is that i am a wordy bitch i talk way too much and so i'm working on like editing the video in post as well as editing what i when i say things <laughs> so um the next question speaking of that we're just gonna move right on before i start rambling um the next question is when did you start reading i started reading a lot when i was nine so i was homeschooled so from up until i was 12 years old i was homeschooled and from like nine to 12, I decided instead that I just needed to read for an hour a day. So she took me to the library. And so I picked up the Saddle Club books that I started talking about. And that's when I really became a reader. I was that kid. I remember running into the wall three times because uh, someone got me a copy of Black Beauty and I read it like, like this, <laughs> like walking through the house so that I could read. <laughs> and, and yeah, and I wasn't very good at like looking <laughs> I was going. So, um, I was one of those who always had a book um, from a young age, so that was just something that I did. And my house was very chaotic. I grew up with three siblings and multiple dogs and all the neighbor kids always over at my mom babysat to make some money. And like I said, we were all homeschooled, so we were, there was things going on all day, every day. The TV was on, the, my brother was running through the house, the dogs were barking, and I still had to be able to sit and read. So it just kind of became an escape for me to like just sit and read when things get really chaotic. Um, where do I read? So I read currently, I do a lot of audiobooks too. So I read audiobooks in the car or when I'm in the lab or when I'm out on, when I'm out like, well, I don't really own field work because I have to be able to talk to people. But um, if I have like breaks between things, then I'll sit in my car and listen to an audiobook sometimes. Um, I also read digital books while I'm out in the field. We do a lot of processing salmon, uh, salmon from fishing boats by doing counts and checking for code, for what are called coded wire tags. And uh, that gives us all of the demographic information that we need to monitor our salmon runs. And so in between those boats, I'll be reading a digital book on my Kindle. Um, so I'll just be like sitting on a dock, sitting on my car. <laughs> like I've, uh, while I waited for someone to gas up the boat, I've like popped my hatch in my Subaru and like sprawled out back there and read a book. <laughs> so um, a lot of that, uh, I spend a lot of time in the car because a lot of the places that I have to go are three hours away because of rush hour traffic. And or they should only take me an hour a top. So I spend multiple hours in my car listening to audiobooks. Uh, as far as physical books, I do a lot of physical books. I try to read at home for an hour or two every day. And I do that on my couch or in my bed or at my kitchen table or down here in my office. I bounce around. I have to have change of scenery constantly. I read in the waiting room. Um, I read at pubs. I love going and getting a beer and sitting at a pub and reading. It's one of my favorite things to do. I read everywhere, basically. Um, let's see, the next one is what kind of books do you read? Okay, so Stephen King Gurley, as I mentioned. So I read horror. <laughs> um, I branched out to some different types of horror this year. I love, I read uh, The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I want to pick up more of him next year. Um, I have read some Clive Barker, which you can kind of see up there that a friend of mine gave me. Um, I do, Clive Barker was, <sighs> someone on Goodreads described The Great and Secret Show as trying to eat a Olympic, full, Olympic pool size, Olympic sized pool full of the gelatin drink of your favorite cocktail. And I, yeah, it starts off sounding real good. You get some way through and you're like, oh my God, this was a bad decision. Bad choices were made. Then you get your second one and you're like, hell yeah. And then you wake up the next morning wondering what the hell happened and why does your head hurt so bad? So <laughs> I read horror, I read thrillers, started picking up a lot of like uh, free audible thrillers this year, found some really fun things that I really enjoyed. It's weird calling a thriller fun, but yeah, I like thrillers. Um, I'm not big on romance. I like 
fantasy I'm okay with some fantasy that has like a romance element like uh the night circus back here I really loved that one um I've just started reading some T Kingfisher like the sword heart and the paladin's uh, paladin's grace so I'll probably read the rest of those ones those are do have some romance in them and I do I enjoy them um I love Terry Pratchett. I've read three of the Discworld books this year and Good Omens, and I'm absolutely obsessed with Terry Pratchett's voice. So I love comedy, fantasy. Basically, I read everything except I don't read a lot of contemporary, but one of my favorite books this year has been basically a contemporary, and that was The Light Pirate, um, which is down here somewhere here. Um, I really loved that one, and it is essentially like a contemporary with some magical realism type stuff in it and I love that one so I read a bit of everything to be honest I even try to do some nonfiction, but it reminds me too much of doing my PhD and I just don't do a lot of it um, and then the last one is what does your collection look like so most of it is right here but it's spreading so I when I moved internationally I got rid of all of my books except for my hardbacks because all of my paperbacks I had picked up used anyway all my hardbacks I had pretty much picked up used as well um, but they were good condition. Some of them are early editions, so I just wanted to keep them But I got rid of all my paperbacks because I was moving a whole bunch So my collection has just recently started growing again, so it is fairly small But I will turn this around and I will show you what I have here. So let's do that So up here, these are some of the books I'm going to read this year I or the rest of this year because my goal is to finish off all my physical books By the end of this year. So I just finished The Watchmen and Babel my next one up is a Libby hold that I have, and then um, this one is the only book that I picked up new. Everything else on here I picked up, or this one I picked up in a blind in a blind box. So everything else I picked up used. So these are my these are my new books. I did finish the Lock Tomb series on um, Audible, and I want to read it next year physically before the new one comes out. And then if we go down this way, this is some of the books I've finished this year and previously. This is the only Stephen King book that is on my shelf that I have picked up and put down like 10 times. Um, and then everything is a mess. <laughs> so three of the books are missing from here because I use them as my tripod stand currently. And then I've got some nonfiction down here. And yeah, that's what my current collection looks like. Here's the three books. Everything is a mess. I apologize. I didn't think this through. I like plants, <laughs> so these are the three books that I use for my tripod stand, um, and that's my mess area. So, yeah, that is the that's the tag. Um, I hope that you enjoy this. Um, if you if I sound like someone that you want to hang out with, or you have some opinions on anything you saw on my shelf, please comment down below. Um, I really would like to know, and I am pretty open to like chatting about everything in the comments. Um, I have an Instagram that I'm doing with a friend of mine. Uh, we are the Otter Readers. Um, it's a long, long old over like overused joke of us being significant otters. Um, I was her maid of otter at her wedding. <laughs> yeah, so um, millennial cringe. That's all. Uh, I'll put that in the um, in the thing below. I'm always. I'm always available to talk in the DMs. Um, well, I might not reply right away, but I will always respond. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will be seeing you around at least a couple times a week for the foreseeable future.